Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston here. I'm here at my Subpod compost bin and I wanted to give you a little tip for one of our little friends here. Can you see this cute little native slug here? Maybe. No, he's going into the Subpod right now. He's trying to get in there to help us out. Let's see if there's any inside it right now as well. They're normally up here. In oh, oh, we had a flood. Okay, well, I'm going to have to get some carbon in here. This is a great opportunity to talk about what to do if your sub pod gets really damp. We had a torrential rain last night. I can see the worms are, can you see them? They're hiding up in here. So we're going to need to uh, get some dry carbon in here. Good thing they have these high places where they can go and hide. What I was going to, oh, <laughs> there's so many there. What I was going to show you, friends, oh. There's one of our sluggy friends coming in to help right now. So you can see how the holes on the side of the sub pod work. Also, if it gets too waterlogged in the bed outside, they can climb inside and vice versa. I'm just gonna show you about this. I picked up a slug on my way on my dog walk this morning. And um, I already had worms in that hand, so the slug freaked out a little bit. And you may wonder what I can do about that. Most people would go inside their house and try and clean that slime off right away. Okay, slugs have different kinds of slime. And it's slime. Um, it's not water-based, really. Um, so what what do I need to do? I wait for it to dry, and I just rub it off. I give it a little bit of rub, and sorry, I can't hold the camera and do it. And I'm going to get most of it off by rubbing. You can see most of it's come off. That was sticking up before. And then when I get the most of it off by that, then I can go inside and wash my hands, and no problem. But look, these guys really wanted to come out and talk to us today. So let's just show you, I'm making a longer video than I expected to. So let's talk about the sub pod a little bit. You can see I've been doing this sub pod since uh, January. And so my warm blankets are getting a little old. The little guys are up here eating it. They will do that. So you have to get a new blanket every now and then. It's meant to do that. It's meant to be compostable in the end. So it's all good, but you can see um, the green things throughout, that was the part of the experiment, right, friends? That is my um, trash bags. They have compostable compost bags that come with them. And that's what they're doing. They don't compost super well. They do eventually, but see, they're these long, straggly things, and they get caught up in my aerator. But you can see, as much food scraps as I've been putting in here, they've eaten most of the stuff on this side already. I don't usually stick my bare hands in here. I'm just showing you. This is some shredded paper. The smaller you shred it, the better, because the long strands of shredded paper do this. They clump up in balls, and that's no good. You want them in nice, thin pieces. There's the an old piece of something. But there's not a lot in here that hasn't been already composted. You see, here's some little of our worm workers here. Um, I think they're saying also, maybe on this side, that they're a little hungry. Maybe I need to get some food in here for them. Yipes, sure looks that way. Let's try the other side. This is the great thing about the full-size sub pod is, ah, each side is different. This one got a little moldy. Remember, it's been raining for two days, and you can see how it is. This is our corn husk. This is what's left of our ear of corn. Interesting. Some more of our warm volunteers. As soon as you take the blanket off, they're like, ah, sunlight. Ah, this is what I mean about the compostable bags. They don't really decompose that quickly. This one's been in there since Monday. And you can see it's falling apart, but it's not quite coming apart. Um, this is the end of a hydroponic head of lettuce. Banana peels, if you don't chop them up, they take a hot minute to decompose too. I throw in, yeah, Q-tips and paper towels. Somebody in the house loves using paper towels. It's not really me, but I, I compost them since, since they're here. Ooh, this is hot. This is hot, so I probably need to get this cooled off a little bit. And one of the ways you can cool off your sub pod, look, here's a Triscuit. One of the ways you can cool off your sub pod in the summer is to get some bottles, plastic bottles or glass bottles, um, freeze some water in. Of course, if you're using glass, you're not gonna fill it up the whole way. And then just tuck it in. You can tuck it in around the outside of it. You can tuck it into the corners. Um, it's gonna help it cool off. Ooh, look at all these babies. This side is super healthy. You can see, oh, here's the rest of that corn. A bit of the cob, it's trying to sprout here. 
This is so lovely, friends. Okay, you can see some of this is getting ready to go. What was this? This was something at one point in time. I can't recognize what this is anymore. Just aerating this, getting it up because there's really good already worm castings down here. Now, some of these I may be able to feed to my hermit crabs myself. I normally buy them, but that's before I started composting. So I'm wondering if I can't just feed my little hermit crabs my own worm compost. So definitely this side has a little bit of food left and you saw how many more worms were in this side with the food. So this side definitely needs some food and some more carbon that's not paper. Maybe we'll get some cardboard in here. Okay, friends, that's it for our little tour. And you can see by the end of this, almost all that slime has come off my hand as well. Did our little friend make it inside? Oh, look, our little friend did just make it inside. Hello, little native slug. I, this is your choice. I tend to allow the native slugs to come in. Any great leopard slugs? Nope. I kick them out. But the little native guys, I love them. This is a great habitat for them. A lot of native slugs, friends, are having trouble because of things like all the salt that we put on our roads and sidewalks, front walkways, whatnot. That salt solidifies the soil around the road and it's really messing with our slug population. And if you don't care, you should. They decompose waste, they're so important. Um, but that's a little tip on slugs. If you're picking up slugs and worms from the road to bring as volunteers, 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 to your sub pod, you may want to carry them in different hands or different little bags as you bring them home. I really do want to get a little basket. Anyway, <laughs> that was a little tip. Oh, and if you're wondering how things are growing, here's the basil and the dill looks lovely. And then of course, our cilantro tree that we've been harvesting a lot of. The rabbits are really enjoying that. But I think the basil and the dill are ready for them to start munching on too. So God bless you, friends. Have a beautiful day in God's creation. Amen.